On the big story this morning, we talk about Uganda's security situation. There's so many unanswered questions. There's so many unresolved robberies, unresolved murders, unresolved kidnaps. Uh, there's still many people that are still kidnapped. And, uh, you know, police is still running around trying to see what to do about this. Question, how did we get here? Um, is it an increase in immorality of sorts? The president in his statement yesterday called people that do things like these swines. He, in a way, was saying, look, there are people who are bad mannered and immoral. But is it a question of just that? Um, is there no issue of are we competent enough in as far as investigations are concerned? Are we doing all it takes to protect Ugandan citizens? What is the problem and how can we remedy this? Let me get to my guests, uh, Bernard Sabeti. Bernard is um, a political analyst. Good morning, Bernard. Good morning, Joel. We're also joined by Fred Egesa. He is a security expert. Good morning. Good morning. Bernard, let me start with you. Um, do you feel safe? And the reason I ask that is because, you know, I, I have many friends who tell me I'm, I'm always living in fear. As they drive back home, they get yeah. to their gates, they're looking left, right, and center. They are always in panic mode. As yeah. they leave very early, they are panicking. They don't feel safe. Do you feel safe? Yeah, you can't feel safe with, with the, the kind of uh, scale of, of uh, these crimes you are seeing. You, you cannot feel safe even if you are a nobody. Mm. Uh, court and of court. I mean, I was getting into my gate yesterday and as I parked outside and I went to open the <coughs> gate, mm. somebody warned me that one day they are going to drive off with my car, that, that I shouldn't leave the auto running mm. when mm. I go to open the gate. He said, what if somebody comes actually and drives off? And that's when I realized that some people actually are too conscious. Mm -hmm. I, I've mm -hmm. never thought about that because I do it every day. But you can see that I think it, they are just becoming too many, too many instances. And I think you cannot blame people really for thinking that, uh, uh, you know, they are almost helpless to protect themselves. And this is not very good at all. Uh, from the political side of things, actually, this is a black eye for the government. Because you see, there are not so many public goods that the government delivers very well in this country. When you look at health, education, infrastructure. But for a long time, a lot of people gave the government a pass that at least when it comes to security, people can sleep. That, that's the, the saying that has been going around. But now, even sleeping now is now, you know, questionable. It's not guaranteed anymore. So that raises a question really that where is the government's legitimacy uh, left in terms of governance because security is one of the most important public goods uh, that citizens expect from mm. the from their government now that it cannot guarantee it uh, that becomes a serious problem fred how did we get here um i don't know if you are on social media but uh, many folks on social media will really pretty much say what you know Bernard is saying. They, they live in fear, even though they are not prominent people per se, because again, we've had so many people that are not prominent, that have been attacked, that have been robbed. Uh, it's just that because they're not prominent, it doesn't get out there. But how did we get to be this way? Uh, I think it was the way the government has been, uh, the, 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 time and, the time and the attention, not even the money, because I'm sure there is a lot of money, uh, released around secu domestic security. But uh, it, I think the way the government looked at security, the way in several countries, like go to Kenya, go to Nigeria, go to, to some other countries of ours, of, 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 where we have equal, equal levels of maybe of, of sev several things. Econo uh, you look at, they have what we call research centers, crime research centers. So for purposes of uh, understanding crime and then prevention and then warning the public and things like that. Uh, it seems that uh, we took up security politically and we thought that uh, good cadres can also be good, uh, good deliver, uh, they can deliver well because they are good cadres. Now, I think this was a mistake. Security, especially domestic security, is far mm -hmm. different from, uh, from the national security of guarding borders. Uh, with domestic security, every human being should appear and should feel safe. Now, short of that, the, you know, every other thing can crumble because you need, uh, every, a nation needs a good economy and needs good investors and needs settled people. Once people are not settled like we, in the situation where, where we seem to be driving to, into, then there is a big problem and it has to be addressed. 
And not only, let's not also, let's not, let, let's not just say government. All of us, the elders, everybody should get concerned and wake up. They, they look at parliament. In Kenya, they have, uh, they have that kind of national research, uh, national crime research centers, which they have, come, they have come up with for purposes of looking at the causes of crime and the prevention, how such a crime can be prevented or how the public can be warned. Here we seem to say if it is not the president handling security, it should be Kaihura, it should be the army, and then we leave it at that. And I think this is unfair. Bernard, uh, the president's statement yesterday was, was quite scathing. Um, he was obviously angry, and rightly so. I mean, when a young life like this is taken, and not to mention the many other lives that have been taken. And so he used words like swine and uh, so on. And, and he seemed to insinuate, that's my reading of, you know, the situation. I seem to insinuate that there's many bad people. Um, there's many people that are immoral, and that's why we seem to see this happening again and again. Mm -hmm. But I thought there's bad people everywhere, and you need to make sure you keep the bad people away from the good people. So is it a question of immorality that we are seeing so many robberies and murders, or is it a certain gaps somewhere? Is it certain incompetencies of those that are meant to keep the bad guys away from the good guys not doing their job? I think it's a combination of all that. As you said, there will always be bad guys in any society. And the role of the government and uh, everyone else is to make sure that you stop those bad people from committing crimes. I think the, one of the key issues here, uh, and, and this is a long-term project, Joel, <coughs> when you look at the, the structure of our economy, this is a very unequal society. Uh, this is not to excuse people who commit crimes because not every poor person uh, goes ahead and commits crimes. But some of this can be directly attributed to the desperation, especially economic deprivation of certain individuals. We have a very small elite in this country that owns almost everything. We have a group of people that have grown fabulously wealthy over the last 25 or 30 years. At the same time, this wealth has been thriving alongside, you know, unbelievable desperation uh, in terms of economics. When you have a society that is this unequal, and we keep seeing this in, in several other countries where inequality is a big problem. There are cities in this con on this continent where it's almost, you go out there and when you come back home alive, uh, you have to actually thank God, you know, spectacular kidnaps, you know, happening in broad daylight. And it looks like that's where we are headed. And this is caused <coughs> in part mm. by a lot of people looking, you know, uh, people who do not have money, who do not have any means to live, basically, watching on as a small segment of the society uh, does fabulously well. Some of these things are a direct result of this inequality. And when you want to address this, you, don't, you shouldn't just address the symptoms because some of these crimes are a symptom of a serious problem in terms of economic uh, fortunes of a lot of people in this country. Mm. And so the approach to address this, <coughs> as he was saying, if we had maybe some think tanks that are geared to understanding this problem, we could generate some comprehensive solutions, not just uh, treating symptoms. Because you will arrest those who did this terrible crime today, tomorrow another group will commit another crime. So you have to address the root causes as well. Unfortunately mm. here, we tend to be too emotional when we are addressing uh, things like this. And this is the kind of thing I've been seeing all across the different media platforms. You have to put the emotions aside and try to understand what exactly is the root cause of this. And unless you address the root, then you will not get to the bottom of the issue mm. in, the, in the short time to come. Fred, let's get to some technicalities here. Um, of course, really, this comes on the heels of uh, the loss of Susan Magara, and uh, we continue to commiserate with the family. Uh, but there's been several kidnaps. Uh, there's people that are missing currently, and families believe these fellows have been kidnapped. We hope it doesn't continue to happen, but uh, it's important that uh, we, we keep on our guard. If, let's say, it's, you know, somebody has been kidnapped, and you are family members, what, what do you start with doing? Now talk to us as a security expert because it has happened severally. Some people don't know how to handle it, you know, negotiations and all these different things. What do you do first? Because that's important, I'd like to think. Maybe I'll, I'll, issue, I'll issue a different statement if I was in Canada. 
and maybe I'll say one uh, and another. When, like, yeah, I mean, let me be realistic. I'm in Uganda. Mm. Uh, ordinarily, it should be that they are, they, whoever has such a problem should run to the police and inform them. But the question also comes around who to talk to uh, uh, among the police officers. The issue of trust. Uh, people have been blaming the father of, uh, of Maga, saying maybe he knew, maybe he did this, maybe they did this. Yes, look at this man. He's faced with a life. The life of his kingpin child is, is, is at stake. He looks at policemen. You hear this one has been caught in... Uh, you hear accusations against, uh, around police every other time. Now, you do not... The, uh, you, if you could follow the voice, someone says, I know so much, don't touch Interpol, don't touch this, don't touch the other. Now, here is a situation where someone gets totally confused. And as a parent, maybe I, uh, as, expa as, a, as a very experienced as I, I am, I would possibly have done what the father did. Because um, I'm, um, I'm not certain of who to go to. That's why in uh, developed countries or in countries that have kind of put uh, security at the, a, a good focus, they have special houses, not 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 uh, not uh, not, not uh, like police stations, where people can call, people can walk in, and in confidence issue their complaints, and then the complaints are taken up in confidence. Uh, there should be, before even we talk about someone doing what, even me today, if I have a problem, I'm skeptical going to a police station because uh, as, as known as I am, as influenced as, because, because I know that our police officers for now cannot be fairly, fairly trusted. And this is very, very bad. Because as long as we don't have any, because there are good police officers there, but how do we find out? How, do a, how does a human being know that I should go here? Because in any kidnap situation, you should not do it alone. You should tell someone. But you are at the same time dealing on the conditions of someone who is holding your value, who is holding your child. You do not know how much this man knows about the police and maybe if he has agents there. We have seen connivance of police with the criminals. You do not know that maybe a, a kidnap was designed in the next police station. So, and even the way information is got. You go to a police station, you come in to say, maybe I, I have this to say, three policemen stand around, even those who are not concerned. In the process, it is, it is being discussed in the, in the police yard. So, unless we put up structures and uh, Areas where people can uh, go in confidence, kidnap uh, those uh, victims of kidnaps, families of of the kidnapped will have nothing to do other than to pray to God. Wow, is our so, man Kaihura failing, or are we being uh, too hard on him? Um, of course, all eyes get to be on him. You yeah. know, he's uh, the police chief. We expect that uh, he should keep law and order, yeah. that uh, we should feel safe. Fred, of course, was saying, look, it's collectiveness. We all should be involved in this, but. Uh, he and his people are paid to do this job. And uh, sometimes you're thinking they're trying, given the circumstances and the niggardly resources, but are they doing enough? Or are we just being too hard on them? <coughs> no, I, I think they try their best. But, you know, in some of these jobs, uh, trying your best is not enough. You have to be right all the time. Because you, you know that other very, very emotionally charged story of two kids who were kidnapped mm. and taken to, from Ruero to Hoima, I think. And the police did its work and, and the children were, uh, were recovered. I think they have uh, had other, a few other successful operations in cases of kidnaps. But clearly you can see that in sophisticated cases, especially where the kidnapper is is really, really a sophisticated uh, uh, criminal, the police always has trouble uh, getting it right. When I was listening to this uh, uh, video that has been saturating, the audio, the, the transcript of mm. the call, the conversation between the kidnapper and, uh, and the parents, it was just cheating that somebody even has the confidence to use a phone. In other countries, it's Almost in real time, you would expect that if security is involved, you have satellite data of this communication, you have coordinates of where the call is coming from, even if you do not know who owns that, uh, that line. And then in real time, you are supposed to trace who is making these calls. But clearly, the criminals are so confident these days 
That because they, they know, know there are gaps in the system. Exactly. They know that there is almost nothing like forensics or, or you know, the, the key elements of investigation uh, business that has become very important in the 21st century. They know that the police almost is helpless uh, in tracking these. You know, you can't leave, be so confident to leave all this digital footprint mm. in mm. your work when you're committing a crime. And the police, by the way, we have another case, I think, from two years ago, where criminals were even caught on a camera killing a security guard at one of the NGOs here, I think, on mm. Namirembe Road, human, some human rights NGO. These two criminals are on CCTV footage. The images were captured. They've never been caught to date. We have their pictures. I mean, how, how lower can things get uh, than that? So once you have this, uh, this problem, then the criminals increasingly gain confidence that they will not get caught because they have seen many instances where people who've committed crimes that way have not been caught. So I think this is a huge, huge uh, uh, gap uh, in terms of the confidence that the public has in security agencies. Because now, as I was saying, this is becoming a problem not just for, for the poor, because in most cases the victims of uh, sluggish public goods delivery, when you talk about education, health, is always the poor. Because the rich will take their child to a private school. They will take their, uh, their sick person to a private hospital. Mm. But now, I don't know how many people I don't care how much money you have, can afford private security all the time. And even then, it's not an entire guarantee. Uh, uh, exactly. Sure. So uh, this one becomes now a serious problem. And once it affects the whole spectrum of society, then I think it is going to force the government to do some soul searching. All right. Are we getting mm. our priorities right? Uh, is the security apparatus built to protect the public or the government or the regime? So we have to get our priorities right. Fred, let's talk about certain suggestions to try and remedy the situation. Um, in March of last year, when, uh, of course, there was the Kawesi situation, the president did come out and say, we're going to put CCTV cameras every, in every junction. And, uh, of course, that has since not happened. We thought it would come in the next budget reading. It did not. But anyway, let's, let's imagine it, it gets to happen. That's a different story altogether because many promises are made that never get fulfilled. But... Let's imagine it does get to happen. Is that a magic bullet? And the other thing, of course, he talks about is having fingerprints of everybody. Right now, I understand there's just about 5 million um, fingerprints in the database, if you like to call it, of the police. And uh, yet we are about 40 million. And he says we should have fingerprints of everybody. Do these sound like the magic bullet to you, or is it another panic kind of response? Uh, with due respect to His Excellency's observations, I would like to say that I think uh, you should allow, you should, uh, let's start by building think tanks. Then we, there, there is advice. People come up with different advice, different uh, suggestions about security. Because security is a, it's like any other, any other thing you can, any other program you can start and understand, analyze and then come up with remedies. Uh, if you talk about cameras, yes, there can be cameras, but there are no cameras. You cannot put cameras in bushes where crimes can be committed, where crimes are almost uh, uh, where crimes are committed. You may not put uh, cameras in in tunnels. You may not put cameras in gardens. You may only yes, to a certain extent, maybe you may say it was a blue car. Then by 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 sheer luck, the vehicle passes via a, a camera, and maybe the number is picked. But the, of course, criminals also will know. Criminals always have. Uh, uh, for, for, for our information, they always know. So you are dealing with this, uh, we, you know, and in Uganda now, crime is becoming business. So if it, whoever does business has to know the business intelligence. You have to create a direction whereby you know your hurdles, you know your weaknesses, and you know your enemies. Uh, I would suggest that uh, other than leaving it to Kyle, I don't want to. Maybe sometimes I don't want to talk to him about IGB because maybe he thinks that I don't like him. But I feel that he has not also been able, he does, he is one person who is too busy to listen to anybody. Because we have been here, we have talked. We even tried, I've, I've tried twice, twice to even meet him and tell him, because, not because I, I don't want even to be paid. I just want to tell him, listen, this can happen. Because I've been at it. And uh, there is nobody, that's the problem with Uganda. People always want to look at things politically. 
You say something wrong, they say maybe he's, he's on the opposition. Maybe he's doing this and the other. But listen, kidnappers are not even, kid, uh, not put, uh, they're not uh, targeting opposition. They're targeting anybody with some little money in his pockets. So it's a way we perceive and design, uh, and we look at problems and then we design remedies. Let's not come up with a situation where we believe, yes, cameras can be part of this. Uh, we talk about uh, fingerprints. There are several, several other I ideas. There are several, several other items, security uh, kind of uh, programs that can be designed within. Other than look at a situation where, an, like in the Kawesa matter, we really had a situation of embarrassment, whereby someone, I think, could have deceived the IGP that he can uh, concoct and redesign a face. That's a simple software, kind of, it is a simple program you can, application you can pick off, 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 off what? The of the of, of, of internet. And then you put a noise, put what? Now, he could do this, that the person looks like a guesser. Then the other person looks like the IGP himself. Then the other person looks like the dead. So it is very, very confusing. Can we come up with a sane, senior mind and come up with the designs to secure our own country and our own citizen? That's my mind. Same card registration. Bernard, we, we thought that um, eventually we, we have fixed this. Um, of course, not every card got registered. Yeah. We understand these criminals used up to about 17 SIM cards, which were unregistered. And so there's a plethora of SIM cards that are mm -hmm. out there that are not registered. Um, of course, that doesn't get to be the magic bullet, but um, one would think that would be a good place to start. That yes. if cards are registered, then you have a good place to start, do the investigations, you know who to follow up. Uh, that even if it's Bernard's card that was used, then Bernard would explain to us how his card got out of his hand and that kind of thing, and we are not yet there. It's, it's just sad. You know, about two years ago, the Nigerian government fined MTN mm. $5 billion for refusing to disconnect unregistered SIM cards, which were being used by Boko Haram, that Islamist uh, terrorist organization in the northeast part of that country, to plan suicide bombings. They were using uh, unregistered SIM cards to plan bombings across the country. And the Nigerian government reached a point and they were fed up. After pleading with these companies, please switch off those, uh, those SIM cards. And they were refusing, of course, because telecom companies are business. Now you have millions who have refused to comply, but you still want to be getting revenue. Uh, from their use of your, <coughs> your product. Mm. So I think the government, what they need to do right now is also to crack the whip on, on telecom companies. If they realize that uh, these thugs are using cards of certain companies, they should make it very, very financially painful for the companies to keep allowing this to happen. I think uh, uh, MTN ended up negotiating with the government in Nigeria, and I think they paid one billion instead of five, but uh, that's still a lot of money. For the first time, uh, uh, MTN registered losses uh, in, in the Nigerian market because of that. And I think now they, they did the right thing. So I think because uh, you have this connection between the, the politics and the economy, of course, because the government also wants to continue receiving revenue, but now this is becoming a national security threat, and it needs to be treated as such. Fred, give us some tips, um, because we, we all should be on the lookout, like you were saying. So just a Kaihura issue, he's got his challenges with his team, but uh, we, we all should be security conscious. What, what are those things we need to look out for? Because people are attacked at their gates, wherever, in different, different places. Some are not necessarily persons of interest, because now... For the prominent people, they might say, oh, let's give them bodyguards and so on. I don't know how far that can go, but uh, everybody is a potential victim. So what are those things we need to look out for? Uh, like uh, kidnaps, uh, there, there, is, there should be there's a percentage that goes to the relatives and people you associate with. Because they're the people who will know if you are capable of even dealing with the ransom. So you should be very capable of having your own... You, you should monitor everybody, relatives, cousins, friends, brothers and sisters. There are, cases, there are some cases where even sons and daughters have kidnapped their own. So you have to be very careful. Two, they, they, they you don't put your information in one basket. You don't, when, like if you have five businesses you are doing, or maybe a bank, a banks, of course, who have a problem that even bank information has been infiltrated. But all the same, we, are, we cannot just give up, give up and say, let's keep quiet about this. Uh, the, the, what is very, very important is, as you walk, be sure to inform, because most of the kidnaps in Uganda are not very forceful. 
though we have uh, talked about it, most of the kidnaps, the people are just lured, meaning that you are lured by that person who, who knows you. Uh, I've been telling people that uh, if you are to have any meeting, especially at night, or maybe in a, off town or off road or uh, in like homes, be kind enough to yourself to inform one of, uh, choose one person or two. You inform them on WhatsApp or maybe on phone and I'm going to, to meet so and so. Now after meeting him, I've left him. You just use, try to use a bit of your phone. For those who don't have phones, I don't want to say because really you can be grabbed at any one time. Because someone will try to persuade you and then catch you. So there should be a situation that you communicate your movements. And if you are to move, be careful. Like if someone comes and, and, uh, and uh, maybe knocks your vehicle, like in the form of a, an accident, just drive off. You don't need to stop, especially at night. There are, area, there are situations where someone tends to knock you for purposes of coercing you into stopping. Make sure you do not Stop. Be very careful about uh, who, who you share your business information with because uh, that's where someone creates a... It's not like in Nigeria. Nigeria, can, people can even kidnap if someone maybe wants a meal. He can pick someone and in the process he gets his meal and then he, he is good to go. So, but with Uganda, <laughs> it's like mainly it has been economic and people are looking for money. So we have to be very, very careful of which border border takes you home, which person you meet, don't go into this impromptu kind of meetings. Come and please come and meet. There is something urgent. Be very anybody can kidnap you in Uganda. Interesting, For, uh, uh, Bernard. Um, still a little about this SIM card uh, registration thing. There are people that feel we give out too much information, mm -hmm. and uh, we are not too sure in whose hands this our information yeah. is. Information about who we are, how old we are, our parents, where we stay, what we do. Basically, every little bit about you, and if the wrong hands get mm -hmm. a hold of that information, mm -hmm. there's, there's trouble. Do you worry about that too? Absolutely, because data protection now is becoming an issue. I think there's even a row in par a bill, a data protection mm -hmm. and privacy bill that was uh, uh, tabled or passed. I'm not so sure if it was passed yet, but you know, one of the uh, key tenets of being a citizen is the fact that you have to trust the government to a certain degree unfortunately you have no way around that in some areas so when you go to a hospital you volunteer information on your health when you go to school you give out information on education when you you, you are uh, getting a passport you you give the all this information sometimes there is no way around it but to trust that the custodian of this information is going to be a good steward that's the premise on how a country runs however I think that sometimes uh, the assurance, because we know that sometimes the private entities that have uh, data from private citizens have actually shared that data with the government and security, and not always for uh, genuine uh, reasons. We know, for example, that if security wants to know about uh, information about you, they will go to a company uh, that gives you a phone service or telephone services, and they will get all the information they can track your phone mm. no of course with the, the with the cooperation of of the company i think the custodian is of personal private citizen data i need to assure the public that that data is safe and again we are in the digital economy uh, cyber security is becoming a very very big problem right now because the hackers can, I hear of stories of how hackers actually even withdraw money from banks, but sometimes banks don't publicize that because that would <coughs> undermine the confidence of their customers. So it is becoming a big problem, and you can even see how the developed countries grapple with this. Uh, Russia uh, hacked the election, the 2016 uh, U.S. elections, because now security has changed, and that, that's what he was saying. Unfortunately, most of the poor countries, especially in Africa, have been unable to, to, to cope, to cope. With, with the changes. So we still do security as if we are in 1960, and yet things have changed. That's mm. why all these elements that he was talking about, you need to look at this comprehensively. Cameras alone will not solve the problem. Maybe if there had been cameras on the gym where Su the red Susan was kidnapped, probably they might have picked the footage of those people who did it. But that's just one element. As he said, a lot of crimes happen in far-flung places where you can't uh, install cameras. That's why 
uh, people security is important, uh, you know, cyber security and technology. It needs to come from a comprehensive side of things. And this is why this issue really needs to be studied more, you know, to understand in Uganda's context, what is the most e possible, effective, comprehensive security strategy that we need to have in light of how the world has moved. We mm. cannot continue doing things like uh, we are doing them 20 years ago, even 10 years ago. There was no WhatsApp 10 years ago, you know. The, the way the world is changing is amazing and we need to keep up. Fred, how easy or for that matter difficult is it to get a hold of perpetrators of such crime? Because every time it happens we get confidence from police or even the president who says we are going to catch them. And that's the statement we keep hearing, we're going to catch these thieves. You know, we are on top of this or these bandits or these uh, killers. But, but it never happens. Are they that elusive or is it that difficult to catch them because you know now on social media you'll hear people saying wait a minute maybe there's a lot more than meets the eye how difficult is it to get a hold of these guys could it be that somebody is protecting them or i don't know uh, what i'm looking at is uh, a situation where police has kind of mastered the way we people hold information and tragedies so they know that people after about another month will have another tragedy, so that one will cover the other tragedy and then it will be forgotten about. If the police was serious, I'm telling you, there is a, enough brain in Uganda, there's enough experience in Uganda, it's only that they're very proud. We have a lot of ex-servicemen who have handled this case, who have, been, who have taken the, I mean, the taxpayers' money to train, and they're just in villages digging. They have gathered young people, who, may, who, 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 could, who, may, who have not even come across such a cases. You know, in, in, in like if you are to crack a, in, in any, like if you are to crack a case, you have to look at, exp, ex, uh, you may have the training, but you need also experience. And you, there should be some kind of hands-on uh, mind that you can read and understand the mind of the criminal. But you are sending a young person. Crime preventer. You are sending a crime preventer. You are sending a person very well pipped, but junior in experience. What do you expect him to come up with? Definitely. And you know, th 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 because you, I've, I've looked at investigators here. People work to please maybe the IGP, but they don't work to close cases. And in the pro uh, when, you, when you do that, when you, because I'm looking at a situation that they, we have the voices now. We have what we have now, like in this case, we can use it so, so well for purposes of. Uh, of, of, of getting to the, to the collection of this case. Now look at the ransom which was given. Have you ever had police giving anybody even one million for information? Now, how can people trust them? That's why even I was saying, in the, another media said, please, let the ransom be mentioned by another person, not the police, because the police has cultivated that mistrust with the people. If you cultivate mistrust, people have information. There is information down there. From the day Special Branch was killed, from the day the intelligentsia of the of the of, of the of that peaks uh, uh, domestic security was killed, information still lies low, and that is what one of the things the the government has to awake to awaken and activate, because people. Let me tell you, I'm just uh, speculating, and we are allowed in investigation. We are supposed to dream in investigation. Say, so I'm looking at a crime committed by over four people. These four people have wives, they have friends. Immediately after getting this money, somehow, somewhere, their economic, their, their, their behaviors, their behaviors has, their, their behavior has the changed. The financial temperature the, changes. The, exactly. <laughs> mm. And we can tell the public what to look for. And in the, uh, in the process, information will, will kind of be filtered in. But how will it be gathered? How will it be filtered, filtered to, to make it to be good, good, good leads to the case? Who will do it? Who has that mi mind? Because we have had cases. We think about cases. But as long as, let me tell you, if this case is not cracked within, a, within like one month, it will be a forgotten story. How do we keep up the pressure, Bernard? Because again, um, not that they, they, they should work at our behest, the security forces and so on, but uh, also we seem to move on very quickly. And perhaps something else happens, we jump onto that. Mm -hmm. How do we keep up the pressure and say, look, there are these many unanswered murders, for example, Muslim clerics, you know, today we don't have answers, John Kagezi, uh, Kawesi, and then several others that are not as prominent as these ones. Mm -hmm. And there are no answers to date. And somehow, as a society, we, we have moved on. 
Unfortunately, Joel, you have to understand this in the context of the, the nature of governance uh, that we have here. In most hybrid regimes, uh, regimes where democracy is still shaky, where you cannot exact political price on incompetence, then it becomes hard for activism to compare immediate change. You get my point. So mm. right now, if there was another country, you would say, unless this happens, we are not going, for example, to appropriate money to security agencies again, or we are going to slash your budget. But do we have an independent parliament that can stand on its own and actually give that threat? Because when you, you threaten using the power of the pass, which is the power that the constitution gives parliament, then maybe you can change behavior of some of these security agencies. But we all know the, the composition and the nature of our parliament. As a voter, I could threaten to not vote f a, a certain way again if this is not addressed. But we also know the limitations of, of the, the democratic power that a citizen has in this country. At most, I think what people need to do right now, as he was saying, I think uh, vigilance and, you know, you know, someone was saying the other day that sometimes in a country where public services are so crumbled, including security, the best thing you can do, one, is to not get sick or to not fall prey to, to a, a criminal. Because honestly, if these high-profile cases, are, they are failing to resolve them, what happens to you, Joel, a, a common person, if somebody actually mm -hmm. climbs your gate and harms your family? What, what kind of uh, uh, help are you going to have? So I think right now, uh, in the absence of the political cost that we can attach to compare government to do things a certain way, is first of all, uh, this is why I'm not blaming the other family for deciding to do things on their own, because they realize that in many cases, the security agencies have not helped. But I think the government also should do some soul searching, honestly. Because you see, part of their legitimacy for many years has been that they have kept the country mostly safe. But now that is being uh, eroded right now. I think that should worry them. That should worry them. And because, you know, when you have this, uh, th this crisis, you know, it affects how many people are willing to come to this country to invest. It affects tourism. It's a serious national security issue. All right, let's wrap it up this way. Uh, Fred, I know you've been trying to meet General Kaihura. You have uh, not succeeded at that because you want to share some advice with him. You know, but uh, let's imagine he's watching, or at least his people. Uh, they do, by the way. There's a time they sent us a protest note. We, we discussed <laughs> them here. They were not too happy. <laughs> and so they sent a protest note. So I want to believe somebody out there is watching. If, you know, what advice would you give to this gentleman? Or perhaps his boss, you know, security advice. Uh, possibly. They, they can come to us at no cost. We don't, we don't need their money. We just need, we are, we are, we are fathers and grandfathers of this country. And uh, we, we can dialogue and give them a few tips here and there. Uh, let them just come off the, their high horse and come and listen to us. Because we have, we have handled these cases before and uh, we successfully. Okay, so there you are. Very plain, simple piece of advice uh, that you get to learn to listen. I know that they say our president is Tohavura, he doesn't listen and all these different things, but uh, <laughs> it's important to listen. No one knows everything. So General Kaihura, you have heard and together with the rest of your team, you know, we, we need to fix this together. And so if there's people that can offer some help, reach out to them. Why not? Thank you to my guests, Bernard Zabiti and Fred Agesa. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us this morning. That's it for The Big Story. Thank you for joining us. My name is Joel Senyonyi. Good morning. <laughs>